Yo, what's up, everybody? Appreciate you guys tuning in. It's me, Omar, again, senior coach of partners and strategists for Finish Line, doing another episode of Community Voices. So, our special guest today is Mo Harkless. So, we're waiting for him to tune in. Um, yeah, so what's everybody been up to? Talk to me. What up? Oh, I pulled out three more sneakers from my closet. Um, so I got a pair of off by fives. Have on rotation for the most part. I love the yellowing on it too. Uh, these just dropped. Um, the Silver Jays, I know a lot of people wanted these. Um, so yeah, I got lucky on the sneakers app. And lastly, these threes, I think they come out, uh, I think this weekend maybe. This one got the, the Japanese in the back though, so. Yeah. Uh, you know, three sneakers, pretty calm. Pretty calm. What y'all got on y'all feet? What y'all wearing today? Fire sheets. Yeah, man, a sneaker says size 14. Got a W. I wear a size 14. What else I got? What else I got? Let's see my man came in. Nah, he's not in yet. What are the new releases? I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but. I know some threes is dropping. We'll try. No show Nike socks. Gotta do those. Who am I? I am the senior cultural partnership strategist for Finish Line. So every Friday we do uh, Q and &E voices and I'm the host. So my IG handle is Omar with two R's. Yeah, a lot of fire driving. Oh, my man, Mo. Let me buy him in. Mo, you got a request to join the live. Nah, I'm not an indie. Hey, right here. Nah. Let's see where we at with it. Nah, I ain't seen a request yet. Oh, there you go. Uh, so you're about to tap in with us. Yo. Yo, what's going on, bro? Yo, what's good, Mo? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How you holding up? Good, man. Um, I'm actually just watching, watching the, one of the, uh, the OKC game right now, OKC Clipper game. Oh, who winning? <clears throat> it's, it's Clippers up four right now. It just started, though. First quarter. Just started? Yeah. All right. How you feeling? No, I'm good. You know, appreciate you taking the time out. Um, we saw what she was doing, so I feel like it would, been a, would be a great guest for our community voices. So, mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. You know, uh, during like with everything going on between COVID and BLM, we noticed how you change your personal website into becoming like a a resource website that shows like a lot of black businesses and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. How did you um, come up with that decision to, you know, use your social, well, your website to turn into a, a resource page? Um, you know, I, you know, when this whole thing kind of started up and. You know, it was gaining attention in media. People started talking about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a lot of people, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of my friends or just people I didn't really know that well. And they, and, and, they, and I, I was hearing a lot of people say, like, they wanted to help, they wanted to do something, but they just didn't know what to do. Right. Um, so it kind of started out with just, you know, me posting some stuff on my Instagram of different things that, like, different things that they could do to, you know, different resources, places mm -hmm. they could see what they could do. And then it was like, I wanted to have, I wanted it to play, uh, have a place to live. 
So I figured, why not um, just turn my website right now, you know, into into a, a resource hub. Um, right. Not you know nothing is more important right now than kind of you know spreading the word and getting people to you know take action. So I just decided to turn what was mine into something for everybody. Yeah, that's that's great. Just because I feel like what people need right now is information and resources amongst like all types of topics that are going on within the space. So, yeah, that's definitely a smart idea for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, and then last week we had uh, Miguel on and we were talking about uh, mental health. So I know that's something that's very important to you. So how could uh, you want to speak on that as far as like how it affects you and why it's so important within mm -hmm. the community? I mean, mental health is, uh, is, is probably one of the most important things that people don't really talk about it as much as it's good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it affects people's attitudes, the way people carry themselves, all of that stuff. And a lot of times, um, people just don't have anyone to talk to or they're, they're scared to talk or they, you know what I mean? They're not comfortable finding somewhere or an outlet. Facts. Um, but it's important that we find those outlets, you know, and, and what I had on the website was just a couple of different you know, things that, that you could, you know, take a chance on and, and try to look for help if something's, if you're going through something, especially right now during this time, yeah. this, I'm sure more than other times, there's a lot of people going through a lot of different things. So I feel like that's such an, it's probably one of the most important parts because at the end of the day, you gotta, you have to be mentally able to go out mm -hmm. and start to make a change. And you can't do that if you're not taking care of your mental. Right. Especially like more so now than ever, just because of what people see on social media and like, right. you know, being able to have somebody to cope in just to like talk and vent to or even like seeing a therapist. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely what you're doing with mental health is something that's super important, especially to the community as well. Right. And I think that's a nice segue into the importance of voting as well, which is like one of the things you uh, champion on your website. Yep. So from your experience of voting, why do you think it's so important for us to really get out there and vote? Um, I mean, it's important because that's, that's how you make your voice heard. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, right now with the, you know, with our, with our government, the way things set up is that that's the, that's the way we were able to have our voices heard and, and actually make a change, you know? Yeah. We, you know, I think people have been doing a great job with uh, the protests and just bringing awareness overall to everything that, you know, this country has been going through and, and people of color, you know, black, brown, whatever, beige has been going through. And um, I just I just feel like the next step of that is to actually go out and start to make the change. And I think voting is right. part of that. For sure. That's why, especially now with everything going on, we want to make sure everybody gets some votes. Not even just on, like, the, the presidential level, on, like, the local level, too. Yeah. Like those people are just as important. Like, a lot of people don't even know how, like, when their local elections are, you know? And right. It's, and it's... Um, it's kind of you got you kind of got to search for that information a lot of times. So, and, and a lot of times we don't. Um, yeah. So just having making that information you know available and ready for people, with, I think, is important. Yeah. And then lastly, back on your website, you mentioned a lot of like black-owned businesses, restaurants, mm -hmm. stores, and things like that. So, why do you think it's important to have that kind of visibility for these businesses? Uh, I mean, well, just I think business in general has it, been a tough time. Um, yeah. And I feel like small businesses especially are impacted way more. Um, so, I, you know, I feel like it's, it's a time that we should all, you know, as, as much as we can put into, you know, those small businesses that need help and are struggling through times. Like right now, it's, I mean, with the looting, with COVID, everything, it's, it's just been a lot for small businesses to kind of stay on their feet. Yep. I've seen businesses shut down. I've seen businesses have to rearrange the whole model. So, you know, it was just, it was just me putting something out there for, for us to be able to, you know, support those because I feel like those are the people who need it the most. Yeah, especially those mom and pop stores that just like right. rely on their local community. So, right. you know, you putting that informa information out there for anyone else to see is, you know, goes a long way for them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, lastly, tell me about Pretty Brown Girl. Um, well, honestly, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm learning more and more information about their organization now. I, I just mm -hmm. started uh, digging into it, into it, but from my knowledge, it's uh, it's providing an opportunity for young, young black women or young black children, yeah, especially well, girls exclusively actually, um, mm -hmm. but just you know helping them out, providing opportunities, giving them guidance uh, for young girls, and I think that's it's such an important part of our community that people 
sometimes I think forget about, you know, the, the youth is, is our future. So investing in the youth and their future is investing in our future as well. So it's, it's really. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is probably my favorite part of these interviews when I pull out the checkbook. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, we want to donate at JD and finish line on um, 10,000. It's a pretty brown girl. I know it comes out in reverse, but you know. <laughs> it was like a penny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely want to show them some love. And especially with all the work you've been doing, you know, here at JD and Finish Line, we want to be transparent as far as like any money we're donating. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's been like a big topic as far as like, you know, a company donating, let's say like $200 million and no one really knows where it goes. Right. You know, so I think with us doing these interviews and being able to like specifically hit on these smaller charities has been great for us. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing, and I'm, I'm grateful that you guys, you know, uh, reached out for me to be a part of it. Yeah, anytime. And uh, lastly, I know a lot of people are trying to see what your sneaker game is looking like. So, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I'm actually not home right now, but I can show you yeah. what I got on my feet. Yeah, what you got? Some heat? <laughs> <laughs> so, the little Kentucky Dunks. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've, been, I've been rocking out with Dunks. Heavy for the past yeah. like six, seven months. So I've been, I've been. That's what I've been really rocking lately. But you know, the nah, dunks today. That, that's a good one. That's a good one. They want, they want like four hundred dollars for those now. I got them when they was like hundred bucks, <laughs> like hundred bucks. But yeah, you know, next time we gotta definitely do like a, a closet situation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Yep. I appreciate the time. Thank you for tuning in. Um, let you get back to the game. So, yeah, I'm going to upload this to IGTV. Okay. So everyone else who missed out can see it. So. That's a bet. Appreciate you, bro. All right, you too, Mo. All right.